So in this election for president, folks, we've seen two major turning points. Obviously, Kamala Harris being the Democratic nominee is the major turning point. But there's another one that's not so obvious. And it's interesting, I think, folks, to note that there are four people who are very close to Trump who, in fact, might be the ones who helped sink Donald Trump's chances at the presidency. And who are these people? Well, there's an article that's out by the Daily Beast. It's entitled, Trump's Bropocalypse Advisors Got Him Cat Lady Vance. And what's interesting about this whole thing is the people who are involved. So the article says, Into this vacuum gallop the four dorksmen of the apocalypse. Donald Trump Jr., Steve Bannon, Peter Thiel, and Tucker Carlson. These four championed Vance, pressing Trump to choose the candidate who most resembled a bearded ivory soap baby. Vance could deliver something that appealed to each of these men. He's under 40, a religious extremist, a malleable suck-up, and a Marine from the Midwest who graduated from Yale, Yale Law School. The one thing I would like to say about his being a Marine, folks, he was a Marine correspondent. Now, that doesn't diminish his contribution in the Marines, but it does give you the idea that he was not involved in combat when he was in Iraq for six months. I mean, there is a difference between being a Marine correspondent and a Marine out there actually fighting. The article goes on to say, J.D. Vance is a convert to Catholicism. Vance supports a national abortion ban with no exceptions for rape or incest. He's often said that two wrongs don't make a right. The first wrong is the rape. The second one is the abortion. Two wrongs don't make a right. So it's no exceptions for rape or incest. He also voted against the Right to IVF Act in mid-June, which is why Vice President Kamala, Kamala Harris released a campaign statement on July 25th with the headline, Happy World IVF Day to Everyone Except J.D. Vance. And folks, it's, um, it, it's those four people that that have dealt Donald Trump the secondary one-two punch that might have actually poked a hole in the boat for Donald Trump's chances to become president. And we're seeing that unfold. Vance is wildly unpopular. Nobody seems to like him. He's been called, or he called Donald Trump America's Hitler, folks. And the thing that's true about that statement is nothing's changed except Vance. I mean, uh, Trump is still America's Hitler. The only person that's changed is Vance, who all of a sudden thinks otherwise. And more recently, folks, he was at antagonizing, I guess is the best way to say it, poking fun at Kamala Harris for being childless. And it seems like his definition of being childless is not just people who have not had physically had a child, like Kamala Harris, but it also involves people, it seems like, who are childless but yet maybe have adopted a child, who are childless, who might have a attained a child through marriage, like Kamala Harris. Those, those people, nonetheless, are considered childless. And it's interesting, folks, because he said this, things that J.D. Vance has said about people without kids. He's called them childless cat ladies, childless sociopaths, less mentally stable, most deranged, most psychotic, radical childless leaders, more sociopathic, driftless, childless Democrats. So I guess you can't be a childless Republican, according to J.D. Vance. That's interesting. And then he said, must be stopped. So what is it about being childless that has affected him so negatively? I mean, I don't think anybody knows what's going on in J.D. Vance's head, folks. I don't think anybody knows um, what, what, what is wrong with J.D. Vance. But on so many different levels, you know, he opposes any form of gun control. He opposes same-sex marriage. As you heard, he opposes IVF. And, folks, it's, um, it's, it's a radical element that's been injected here. And Donald Trump could have gone a lot more mild. He could have gone with 
with Doug Burgum from North Dakota, a moderate, a guy who's actually got a track record of doing things for North Dakota. He could have gone that route and, and widened the tent of the Republican Party. But Donald Trump thought he had everything in the bag. He thought he had it made. He thought he could do anything because he was running against Biden. So we brought in J.D. Vance. He listened to Don Jr., Tucker, Steve Bannon, Peter Thiel. We're pressuring him. He listened to them. He brought in Vance. Now it's looking like one hell of a mistake that just might sink his campaign. And there's no easy way out of that, folks. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is this. And yes, this this is sort of on the humorous side, but it's there's some truth in here. There's some truth in here, folks. Ron Filipkowski put this out a day ago. His question was, what's the most plausible explanation for why Trump has never been in a swimming pool despite owning them his entire life? Hashtag Trump is weird, which we know, which we know. A very weird individual indeed. And I, I just can't help but think back to all the the weird things that he's done. Trump University... You know, strange. I mean, who would have thought that that was a winning strategy? You know, let, let's pretend that we're educating people and actually we'll scam them out of millions of dollars. <laughs> I mean, it just, uh, it never ends. He sold that property in, in Palm Beach to the fertilizer magnet from Russia. And as they're walking around, one of the realtors who was on sort of like a, a tour of the home, which was just awful, awful. They reached over and they looked at one of the fixtures in the bathroom and they kind of scratched it with their fingernail. No, it's fake. It peeled off. The gold peeled off. So it just goes on and on. I mean, we've, we've got one weird cookie here named Donald Trump. But what is the most plausible explanation for why Trump has never been in a swimming pool despite owning them his entire life? He's got a beautiful pool at Mar-a-Lago. He's got the ocean right across the street. Do you think he's ever been in any of those? Do you think he's ever touched the water? So what's the problem? And I responded with the most likely scenario here, folks, that, you know, this this whole notion of why he's never been in a swimming pool his entire life, it's complicated. It's complicated. It involves what I would kind of refer to as a three-step program. First of all, he's got to start wearing shorts in public, maybe on the golf course. He's got to start with shorts. We've never seen him in shorts, period, ever. So what? Your legs are white. Nobody cares. But he's got to start wearing shorts in public. I mean, that's step one. The second step would be something like, him donning a very puffy swim sw- set of swim trunks and maybe a white t-shirt with the Mar-a-Lago logo on it, which is right here, by the way, something like this, you know, a nice splashy logo on the front or maybe the back or maybe, you know, a crest in the right position. But there's the crest. And he was actually criticized for this, this crest, by the way, back in 2017, by SF Gate for utilizing a coat of arms that doesn't really belong to his family. But who cares? You know, who cares? It's a crest. It looks great. It's got the look, right? It's got the lions. It's got three lions on it. It's in gold. Everybody loves it. It's a part of MAGA. So, yeah, put the T-shirt on, long sleeve T-shirt, so you're not showing any skin, logo on it, and just kind of, you know, plop into the pool like Cleopatra or something and just kind of swim around. Step back, let that happen. Measure and quantify the media response. Let's see what people think. We know MAGA's going to love it, but what about everybody else? Optics are critical. Quantify the media response. It might take a week. It might take a couple of weeks. And if you're satisfied with the media response... The next approach to swimming in the pool might be to do something at midnight with a a very secretive and private gold goblet of wine outside the view of media. And then you could 
at the at the stroke of midnight, you could descend into the pool again like Cleopatra with a limited amount of media with full control over the pictures, the cameras, everything. And then you could kind of descend, like I said, like Cleopatra, just kind of swamp around in the pool. Right? The camera begins, so they're not seeing you going into the pool. They're seeing you just in the pool. The photos are taken. The photos are done. The cameras are then put away. You come out with a luxurious plush towel from mar lago again with a logo, preferably. You change and you, and you go on about your day. Then you review the photos that were taken to optimize your choices for the best angles and, and all of that stuff, the best look. You know, it's, it's all about optics. And folks, if it's done right, the media will delight. So there's your answer to what is the most plausible explanation for why Trump has never been in a swimming pool despite owning them his entire life. He's an incredibly busy man. And this three-step optics program takes time. It, it needs people. It needs control. And there we have it, folks. So long story made short, it just may never, ever happen. We may never, ever see Donald Trump swimming in a pool. But if you happen to see Donald Trump ever start wearing shorts, that might be the beginning of the three-step optics program, and we might just anticipate something positive out of that. But we'll just have to obviously wait and see. Till next time, folks.